two centimeters is what separated Ruben Barrichello and Michael Schumacher over the finish line of the Indianapolis Grand Prix back in 2002. Or at least, that's what it looked like. The official difference was just 0.011 seconds. Incredibly close race, right? If only the story was so simple. This was the most shocking race of the season. And remember, this was a season with a crazy crash between Ralph Schumacher and Ruben Barrichello, Montoya and Schumi locking horns, and Ferrari implementing some very controversial team orders. This is the story of the closest and possibly most controversial Formula One finish of all time. This grand stage was to be the scene for the United States Grand Prix. In between all the anticipation and excitement, the race weekend featured not only the pinnacle of motorsport, but also support races from the Porsche Super Cup and the Ferrari Challenge. So it seemed like a pretty good weekend for the motorsport world. When it came to the F1 title race though, it was pretty much done already. Michael Schumacher had already inevitably confirmed his fifth driver's championship five rounds earlier at the French Grand Prix. The Scuderia had likewise claimed the World Constructors Championship two races after that at the Hungarian Grand Prix. And with Williams lagging far behind in the points, the championship titles were well locked in for Rari's grasp before the engines roared to life in Indianapolis. What possible reason could people have for watching this race? Why am I even talking about it? While the championship drama had pretty much reached its finale, there remained a subplot for the race. Ruben Barrichello, Schumacher's teammate, was on a mission of his own. The Italian needed just three points at Indianapolis to secure second place in the World Drivers' Championship. And as a poor second driver, that means a lot sometimes. Just ask Sergio Perez. Now, whilst the mood around Ferrari should have been festive, it was anything but. There had been a lot of controversy surrounding the Scuderia leading up to the race, and it led to an outpouring of outrage once the chequered flag fell. 2002 was supposed to have been a legendary chapter for the team from Maranello. They had been unerring, special, and sensational all year long. The Italian powerhouse, armed with what many considered their best car in over 50 years, and arguably the best driver of all time, had ripped up the record books. Their dominance throughout the season was nothing short of staggering. The year should have been remembered as something out of Enzo Ferrari's best dreams and an absolute masterclass in engineering and racing, but a single mistake had threatened to cast a shadow over the entire season. This mistake had been so severe that public criticism was now threatening to rain on their title parade from every corner of the world. The blunder at the Austrian Grand Prix, where Schumacher graciously handed the victory to Barrichello in a controversial team order, had had far-reaching consequences. Ferrari, particularly Schumacher, seemed blindsided by the aftermath that unfolded in the hours and days following the incident. I didn't feel like, but then... I have, I have to be honest to say now it was probably the wrong decision to, to win this race, yes. If I had the chance to, to, to turn it around, I would probably do, but I, I cannot now. They had not anticipated that the repercussions of this PR blunder would continue to haunt them nearly five months later. It was a scorching Saturday at Indianapolis, and the anticipation hung thin in the air as the magnificent Michael Schumacher raced around the track, prepared to conquer yet another pole position. Fans had turned up in their thousands to watch the best in the world, and the best in the world certainly didn't disappoint. Having comfortably ruled the timesheets in all the practice sessions leading up to qualifying, anything less than pole position for Schumacher would have been a shocker, but this seasoned racer delivered, leaving teammate Ruben Barrichello unsurprisingly trailing behind. It was Michael's sixth pole of the season and the 49th of his career. Admittedly, the first attempt went awry as he ventured too wide at the first corner, but the second run was flawless, clocking in at 110.790, the fastest lap around the brickyard since F1's debut there. Barrichello had missed Friday's practice due to a harrowing crash, and yet still somehow found a way to secure the second spot on the grid. As the Ferraris took up the first two spots on the grid, the real intrigue unfolded behind them. Surprisingly, it was David Coulthard who emerged as the front runner among the non Ferrari contenders, outpacing both Williams drivers. It's nice to qualify third. It's the best I've had in quite a bit. The gap to Ferrari is still too big on what is quite a short circuit. 
Anything can happen in the races. Anything can happen in these videos, so you really should subscribe. Conversely, the day brought a lot of disappointment for Montoya after he spent the session grappling with balance issues in his BMW-powered FW24. The frustration was understandable, especially after losing the third position by a hair's breadth. After them, it was Kimi, Jacques Villeneuve, Jano Trulli, Giancarlo Fisichella, and Nick Heidfeld that rounded out the top 10. Further down the grid, the Renaults, Toyotas, and even the Jaguars have been dealing with their own share of challenges with balance problems. Eddie Irvine had been on a real flyer during that Friday and Saturday practice sessions, but bizarrely found himself more than half a second slower than his best practice time during qualifying. Among the strugglers, Renault's Jensen Button and Toyota drivers Alan McNish and Mika Salo faced similar grip issues, with Salo ending up in a disappointing 19th position, just ahead of Minardi's Alex Jung. That wrapped up qualifying, and for many, this race just felt like a formality. That would definitely not be the case when the first two cars crossed the finish line. As the sun dipped low over Indianapolis, you could feel the anticipation crackling in the air. As the cars lined up on the grid, there was a real sense of finality about the race. Schumacher would win. Ferrari would win. It would be business as usual. Everyone would go home and forget about the race. And yet, when the red lights went out, So did the predictability of the finish. Schumacher got away well, soaring into the lead immediately, and the initial moments were surprisingly drama-free, with all drivers safely navigating the opening lap. Barrichello trailed Schumacher, followed by David Coulthard. Ralph Schumacher, who managed to overtake Juan Pablo Montoya at the start, the Colombian himself. Jano Trulli and Kimi Raikkonen forming the top seven as they crossed the start line for the second time. Montoya, though, was hell-bent on disrupting the order of proceedings and had his sights set on reclaiming the fourth position. As he approached turn 13, he closed in on Ralph's rear wing. much to the frustration of a visibly upset Patrick Head. While Montoya managed to continue after dropping to seventh, things were not so rosy for Ralph as he lost his rear wing in the incident. He had to crawl back to the pits, and with two key competitors now out of the running for the race win, Schumacher and Barrichello wasted no time in stamping their authority. By lap five, they were closely running together, creating a substantial five-second gap ahead of David Coulthard. Behind them, Trulli, Raikkonen and Villeneuve formed a chasing pack, benefiting from the Williams driver's mishap and positioning themselves for potential points. But as the race died down at the front, it was surging with life at the back of the grid, as a small skirmish unfolded between the Jaguars and the Minardis. They were jostling for position, and at least there was something entertaining going on in the race. By the 15th lap, though, the two scarlet blurs at the front had already built a 15-second gap over David Coulthard. His teammate Kimi Raikkonen, however, was facing a real problem. His Mercedes engine had started misfiring. The real action in the race started when Jacques Villeneuve, followed shortly by Juan Pablo Montoya, smoothly overtook Raikkonen. Villeneuve, the first among the top six, made his first of two scheduled stops on lap 25, and leader Michael Schumacher followed suit two laps later, signalling his intention for a two-stop strategy. Schumacher's pit stop was executed flawlessly, and he rejoined the race ahead of Coulthard. After having briefly led, Ruben Barrichello also pitted shortly afterwards to return to the track in second place, maintaining his position ahead of the McLaren driver. Jano Trulli, holding fourth place, also opted for a two-stop strategy and fell behind his teammate Jensen Button after pitting. The Ferraris wasted no time in regaining their dominance at the front, gradually pulling away from Coulthard, and whilst heavy traffic posed challenges, Coulthard managed to stay within three seconds of the leading duo after 30 laps thanks to a much lighter McLaren. Juan Pablo Montoya, now in a distant fourth, also soon made Made a critical error by diving into the pits 10 laps earlier than scheduled. The result? Precious time lost and a return to sixth place. The race then took another unexpected turn, when the already ailing Raikkonen misinterpreted the pit signals and also made an unscheduled pit stop. This error dropped him further down the order. As the cars continued to clock around the track, Coulthard finally made his only scheduled stop on lap 42, rejoining the race behind Raikkonen who pitted on the following lap. This reshuffling allowed Coulthard to reclaim the third position, albeit more than half a minute behind the dominant Ferraris. The stage was then set for the final laps, with the Scuderia firmly in control and a hopeful Coulthard in pursuit. Only 25 laps now remained in the race, and Michael Schumacher held a lead of around 2.5 seconds over his trailing teammate. And Coulthard was, don't laugh, 
40 seconds behind the leader. At this point, the finish line seemed like a formality. I mean, what would possibly go wrong? There's no way Schumacher was getting caught. As the race entered its final phase, Schumacher knew he needed to make his second stop on lap 49. A quick 7.8 second refueling later, he rejoined the race well ahead of Coulthard. Barrichello then followed suit a lap later, maintaining the order in the top six. Things seemed as they should have been, for the most part, until Kimi Raikkonen's Mercedes engine blew up, and both Jacques Villeneuve and Jano Trulli moved up a position. As the chequered flag continued to beckon, Schumacher continued to get faster and faster. The gap between the two Ferraris now grew to 3.5 seconds, and Coulthard was still a comfortable 15 seconds behind the Scuderia. So what could have possibly made this race so shocking? As the Ferraris approached the final lap, as Michael Schumacher approached the final two corners, he did something that shocked everyone watching. The world champion's Ferrari began to slow down. A man that had dominated the race slowing down? There was an audible gasp from the crowd as Ruben Barrichello barreled towards him at breakneck speed. As the two raced towards the line, you could have heard a pin drop in the silence that rose from the way the world held its breath. The Ferraris crossed the line at the same time, or so it seemed. When the race results came out, it turned out that Michael Schumacher had lost by a mere 0.011 seconds. Ruben Barrichello had just taken the victory right from under Michael's nose. Shock reigned supreme. What had just happened? Who had won the race? Why had Schumacher done that? There were questions upon questions in the wake of the finish, and all of them just made the finish stranger. It wouldn't be until Schumacher spoke to the media that things would become clear. We we work very hard. Uh, we have a fantastic team, and and we have always supported each each other. And today, uh, I, I thought it was a good opportunity to to go equal over the line. Uh, we tried, uh, and we failed by a little bit. Barrichello, though confused, accepted the unexpected outcome. It had allowed Ferrari to finish 1-2 after all. Um, I got to the last corner. I didn't know uh, what to do. And, and nothing has been said. I think, you know, Michael was just uh, very kind to, you know, let us finish equally. As the Ferraris dominated the front of the pack, David Coulthard rounded out a promising weekend for McLaren, securing a solid third place. Following Coulthard was Juan Pablo Montoya, Jarno Trulli and Jacques Villeneuve, whose points added a thrilling twist to the battle for sixth place in the championship. In the media center, folks were buzzing with conspiracy theories that made Formula One look bad. It was a big scandal, possibly the worst in sports history, and the media was eating it up because it was a surefire way to sell newspapers. Well, well-intentioned by Michael Schumacher, I'm I'm sure you thought we can have this victorious formation finish, but it actually is manipulation of the results. All that serves to do is confuse the general public, and I think it's bad for the sport as well. Despite the media's attempts to turn it into a sequel with the whole Austria 2, the payback angle, this time there was no behind-the-scenes puppeteer. Michael Schumacher was the architect of his own mess. It might have been better for Michael to drop the talk about honesty and fairness, which seemed weird in this situation, and just own up to the fact he messed up what could have been a cool finish. Instead, it looked like a staged ending, and the media jumped on it, claiming the public got cheated. Despite pulling off a solid race in tough conditions, the controversy stole the spotlight from the positive steps taken for F1 fans in America. What could have been a celebration turned into a bit of a mess. In the end, though, the race had ended on a rather wholesome note, with Michael Schumacher and Ruben Barrichello winning together in a sense. I can't say the same for these two drivers in 1989.